Hi, welcome to the Phi Kappa Phi Literacy Grant Writing Podcast. My name is Zach Slayball. This is Dr. Paulette Harris, a multiple time recipient of the Phi Kappa Phi Literacy Grant. Um, we're just going to answer some frequently asked questions today regarding the Phi Kappa Phi grant writing process. So we'll just jump right in. Um, first of all, why are we creating a podcast on grants writing for Phi Kappa Phi? Well, Zach, we feel fortunate, as you've already said, that we've received this grant multiple times, mm -hmm. and the editor of the Cap'n actually approached us and said they felt like that a podcast would be helpful. After all, Phi Kappa Phi's mission is to engage the community of scholars in service to others, mm -hmm. and this grant provides up to $2,500 if someone is willing to write the grant and happens to be fortunate enough to be accepted for a uh, grants writing initiative related to literacy. Sure. So what is your particular background in terms of literacy? Well, I do teach grants writing courses here at Augusta State University at the graduate level. And in addition, I founded and direct the ASU Literacy Center. Mm -hmm. So regarding Phi Kappa Phi Literacy Grant Program, what is the purpose of the Honor Society? Well, one of the purposes that relates specifically to the Literacy Grant Initiative deals specifically with involving members of the Honor Society of Phi Kappa Phi, as well as the higher ed community as a whole, to champion literacy initiatives in individual communities. Okay. And how does this purpose relate to the mission statement of Phi Kappa Phi? Well, obviously, Phi Kappa Phi recognizes and feels it's very important for us to promote academic excellence in all fields of higher ed and to engage in the scholarship of learning by involving our community. And such a grant as this allows us to do just that. Okay, so how do we go about applying for the Honor Society of Phi Kappa Phi's literacy grant? Well, the good thing about this is you just go to the website. What you want to do if you're interested out there and listening to this is go to the phikappaphi.org slash literacy. You'll be able to access the online application and review the submission instructions when you go to that site. Okay, so then how does Phi Kappa Phi define literacy in terms of this particular grant? Well, in terms of this grant, they define literacy first very broadly. And I think that's really an advantage to those of us who are writing for this grant. Mm -hmm. They look at literacy in terms of skills, and they think of literacy in terms of a variety of disciplines or contexts. So in fact, we move from basic skills to expanded literacy skills when we take into account what we would like to actually create as a part of this literacy grant initiative. Okay. So what are the selection criteria for the literacy grant proposals that Phi Kappa Phi uses? Well, we can start with either proposing a new project for literacy or expanding an existing project in our community out there. Target groups that relate to the criteria can be individuals all the way from preschool through adult that you would be serving. There are some limits on the budget. The budget for this grant primarily will include items such as supplies, materials, publicity, and postage. Mm -hmm. No funds can be used for salaries or stipends. However, if you are developing a project proposal that involved local travel to the project site in reaching your target audience, you are permitted to include those expenses. Again, we have to keep our maximum request to not exceed $2,500, okay. and it's very important, Zach, to remember that we can't use any of these funds for university overhead cost. Okay. Well, then I'm sure everybody's wondering who is eligible to apply. And hopefully, if you're watching this, you're one of those people who are eligible because you need to be a Phi Kappa Phi chapter member, and you need to be active in your membership, and mm -hmm. you definitely have to be an active, dues current Phi Kappa Phi member at your campus chapter. Okay, so then what does the duration of your project have to be? Well, the good thing about it is it could be a short-term project, it could be a one-time activity, it could be a longer-term project, depending on what the needs of your community are and how you approach those needs in this literacy grant initiative. Okay, so what is the deadline for submitting? Well, you have to be very careful with this because you don't want to miss the deadline. If you do, you are, your consideration will not be given at all. Completed applications must be submitted to Phi Kappa Phi headquarters by April 1st by 11.59 Central Time PM. Okay. So what's the overall goal of the Phi Kappa Phi Literacy Grant Program competition? Well, obviously what Phi Kappa Phi wants to do is engage the chapter members 
and all of the chapter as much as possible to look at what the needs are in the communities where the local communities where they are and to think about how does this literacy project that you're proposing fit in what Phi Kappa Phi refers to as love of learning. Okay. So what project could you consider doing in terms of literacy for your local community? Well, again, you can either choose something that's more limited or more ongoing types of activities. And let me just give you a couple of examples. If you were thinking about an ongoing activity that relates to literacy, you might propose a regularly held story hour at a community library or at a bookstore and do it over a, a shorter duration. If you wanted something that would be ongoing, you might consider doing a book drive, for instance, for local schools in your area or for local libraries. Those are great ideas. So how do we decide to pick one? What, what project could we do? Well, you really have to take a little time and look at the literacy needs of your own individual community and try to decide if I want to meet that need, what would be some creative ways to do so and keeping all of that within that $2,500 max requirement for the RFP for, for Phi Kappa Phi. So is it permissible then to seek supplemental or matching funds for the project? Absolutely. In fact, that will definitely be a plus if you indicate that you do have some matching funds when you submit your RFP. You can look at places like corporate foundations, sources within your own university, local community, state agencies, other funding sources. Again, be creative in terms of how you're going to find some supplemental or matching funds for this project. Okay, so if we are funded by Phi Kappa Phi, are there guidelines relating to how we promote our project? Absolutely. And the most important is every time you promote your project through any type of PR, be sure to mention that Phi Kappa Phi is the sponsor for the program. And that's really important that we continue to do so. Okay, so at the end of the grant cycle, what does the project director have to do with all the unspent money? Well, hopefully you won't have any unspent funds. Mm -hmm. Whatever you've requested, you put it in your budget and you've used them all. But if there are any unspent funds that you're not able to substantiate your use of, then they do have to be returned to headquarters. And that has to take place within 30 days of project completion. Okay, so is there a final evaluation required? And if so, what do we have to contain in that final report? Absolutely. There is a final evaluation that must be included and must be sent to headquarters. And what it must incorporate is definitely defined in the grant proposal. First, all major participants' names who have been engaged in the project have to be listed. They want to know, and I think this is important, what number of individuals have benefited from the project. Mm -hmm. In addition, tying it back to your budget, you must include receipts for all purchases and you must detail how those purchases were spent, exactly what you bought with, with what was given. You also need to send to, it's important that you send to headquarters copies of any photos or flyers mm -hmm. or anything that you've created for your public relations of the project so they'll have those on hand. And I think one of the most important features that you want to include in your report is recommendations at the end for someone else out there who might want to do a similar project of ways to improve it, ways you might revise it, just help to that individual who might want to do a project in literacy that that's very similar to what you've proposed and have now carried out at this point in time. 